they still have to sell it to us. And when we don't have any money to buy it, that's what they have. Much problem when you go for short term profit. I think there's, there's I think two points. Uh, one about the idea of keychains. Um, I think there was, in a way, an attempt to do that at the, uh, the round table at the college uh, two days before the rally in November. Unfortunately, uh, it, I think it was a failed moment because uh, they invited uh, a member of the tea party. And then the question and answer period ended up becoming refuting the tea party. Guys. Rather than talking about the movement. The problem, yeah, that discussion uh, for about two seconds was about issues. And then it, and then it like rest to me, um, which movement is um, has worse civil practices, right? So and so, is it, so that was an attempt and it failed. But um, so which goes to my second point is coming from a political party uh, that we, there's a certain expertise in taking these facts and distilling them into concrete things that can be easily communicated. Um, I think. Uh, there, there is a need to do, to do that. I think uh, in regards to uh, analysis of the issues, I think there is a lot of uh, resources that I believe the Green Party can bring to the table in this respect uh, because we can, we, you know, uh, to use a very brief example, uh, Howard Hawkins, he ran for governor as the Green Party candidate in 2010. One of his major issues was enforcing the stock transfer tax. Right, yeah. Right, and, uh, and and he and we were able to show how the stock stock transfer tax is already on the books. It's been around since the early 1900s. It's not been enforced since 1981. If it was enforced, there wouldn't be there would be a budget surplus for the state. And so, you know, in just a few couple of statements and numbers, we were able to show how um, you know this is a big how. This problem can be fixed, and how the overall debt discussion is, in many respects, contrived. And that argument speaks for itself and stands out because, like, for me, understanding some of these issues, when they go step by step, and you don't understand it, but when you. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, we're doing it in the context of a political campaign, so we had to make it as simple and basic as possible while also you know, conveying the larger picture. And I think uh, you know, that, that's something that I think uh, can be brought about by, say, you know, a policies working group. Because I think uh, you know, a media working group or a communication working group, but I also believe we should form a policy working group where we can actually kind of construct solutions to the problems that we've described in this declaration. Well, do you guys from the Green Party around here, do you guys have a web page where, like, if I wanted to, I'm sorry, I met you, I don't remember your name, I remember your face, but, um, like, is there a website that I can go to and read about this and educate myself? Stupid well, Greens. Stupid Greens. Stupid yeah. Greens on the work. There's okay. also um, gpnys.org, that's the state page, and, of course, gp.org, which is the national page. Okay, okay. So, I mean, like, if I'm in a conversation with somebody about this stuff, and I'm not really there yet where I know about that end of things, then I can say, hey, you know what? You should check out the Steuben County Greens page, you know? You can educate yourself a little bit on it and understand. Maybe you won't agree with it, but maybe you will. You know? And to jump on what we were talking about earlier about uh, this distillation of complex ideas into, into basic yeah. ideas. Uh, the Green Party, obviously, as a political party, has a platform, which is pretty extensive, but we also have our 10 key values, which are, you know, 10, 10 phrases or statements that basically organize what we believe and what we and, and we find it and we find it very helpful to convey, you know, when they think like, well what's the Green Party all about? Well we don't say we say the ten key values because it's it's easier to talk about than to try to do a long list of a platform. And you know the thing is is even though I want to educate myself more on it and stuff, I get this feeling that if I'm trying to bring more people with us to stand up and, you know, become more active in our government and in our world. That might scare some people off at first. Like, we're becoming a little bit, it might become too complicated, like in a lot of ways, you know what I mean? Like, maybe it's okay for us all to be, of course, we're all diverse, 
but we stand on certain issues in certain ways the same way, like we're working class, we want more socioeconomic justice, you know? Well, well remember, everybody has connections. We all have children, parents, uh, you right. know, maybe somebody in the army or somebody who has a life-threatening problem. Everybody has these contacts in their life that help them relate to these bigger... Oh, no, I absolutely agree with that, but what I'm saying is that... We, a lot of times what you see happen in leftist movements historically is people start splitting up mm -hmm. on little things instead of going, you know what, we're all working class, we're all struggling, the 1% is taking advantage of us, we don't have enough st say yet, we're breaking our backs, doing the work. So, you know, we need to kind of, I think, make it a little simpler, is all I'm saying. Or at least some point where everyone can agree on some like some of the major take action. major issues too. Yeah, on major issues, just agree, take action, and you know, yeah, and also another thing too is that I think it's probably important for you guys to and girls to, um, to yeah. But I'm from um, Chicago, everyone's a guy. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, is to maintain like a at least a weekly or at if it that's much of a strain like a bi-weekly uh, designated general assembly, which will be in the same spot, have a flyer and pronouncement out in the net saying it's going to be such and such time, such and such day every week, to at least to continue. Um, more or less lubricating the dialogue um, and trying to come up with uh, even more resolutions and you know being able to make a you know faster resolutions for the actions. But I think where I was kind of going and if you couldn't identify some faculty member, I would propose first showing inside job. Um, yes. You can get it for free on the internet. There's a study guide and. I was, I was talking to them earlier, and uh, I know that I mean, I'm an anarchist. He's a Green Party. Someone else might be a progressive Democrat. And mm -hmm. a, I realize that the consensus is not going to be as radical as I would like it to be. Exactly. There are things that there is consensus on. Uh, I think inside job. I think I think it really I think it identifies just. I think it identifies the problem. I think it identifies <laughs> the, extent, <laughs> the extent to which regulatory agencies like the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, the Federal Reserve, the EPA, is, is a clear case of the, the watchman aiding the thieves. And but that's the simple. No, see, 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 we agree on this, but what we're, I mean, I think what you're kind of getting at, maybe you agree with me, is that I think these things are part of the natural trajectory of capitalism. I, I think that profit over people is the essence of capitalism, but I know not everybody here agrees that with that. What we do agree is this definitely profit over people is happening now, and it's because these regulatory agencies and high finance are conspiring together. And I think where I'm going with this is that I feel like if there was an action, I don't know if there's a Goldman Sachs anywhere around here. There's a Wells Fargo in downtown. I, I would propose watching inside job, doing some kind of action, and using that action as a way to educate and kind of, and then maybe people see that in the media and say, okay, yeah, that, that shit's fucked off. Oh, well, sorry. And, and maybe that, I mean, you're not going to like, you're not going to organize everybody in the next 10 days. What's an inside? Is that a movie? Or yeah, it's a documentary. Is it I'm a actually, I actually, I should have brought my copy tonight. But I've, been, I've been lending out my copy to, to anybody that will watch it. It's called Inside the Job. It, you can watch it for free on the internet. And I'll see it up soon. It's probably a good idea to also direct them to the film's official website because it has tons upon tons of documented information regarding what led to the financial crisis. And you know, you could probably use a number of those documents as well as articles for printout information or to compile, you know, a comprehensive um, pos uh, position paper, too. Yeah, and I, I think um, just someone using at least some of those facts to be able to talk long enough to have like an elevator speech that this is why I'm involved with Occupy, this is, right. this is why we're doing this. And I think that would be a good idea for an action. Um, I don't know how anybody else would do it. So 
I'm going to go back to Albany this week, so like this is my only time here. Oh, well. But I don't know how everybody else feels about that. That's just something well, that's on my mind. And, 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 and to speak to your point about division, okay? Right. If you're going to do things by consensus, by that very nature of the process, it's not so much what you want, it's what you can, it's my experience personally, it's what you can live with. Right. Okay. Right. When you challenge the power structure, and if you watch the way politics are played in this country, it's the politics of the divisiveness. To find, you know, the false scapegoat, whether it's gays or whoever the flavor, or immigrants, or whatever right. the flavor of the month is, and, and, and to get people's anger focused on that versus what the real core problem with the society is. Yeah, I mean, I'm totally with you. You speak to me because I'm more of an anarcho-syndicalist type of person. Um, but at the same time, I realize it's probably not going to happen in my lifetime and that things happen in an evolutionary process. So if we could come to maybe a little bit of a more humane world, a more of a democracy instead of a corporatocracy, maybe we'll get there, you know? And, and Sam, uh, we, have to, we have to frame it in a certain way because uh, for, you know, for almost a century, the words socialism, anarchism, communism right. have uh, become scare words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and part of it is that people look at a historical record and, and are a part of the historical record, um, where there are, but there are, but there are other aspects that unfortunately take time to explain. <coughs> and and you know, depending on who you're talking to, they may not believe you, and they just say, "Oh, you're just." socialists don't pay attention to. So, like for instance, I would say, as we go forward, I would advocate that we concentrate on issues of economic democracy, using right. the phrase right. economic democracy, right. because I think that's a, that's a, a broader term, yeah, it's that, a great term. That, can be, that can be much more appealing. Well, I want to get away from labels too, and like he said, we need to find what we can all live with. And that's the thing that I'm worried about, is I hear a lot of people with a lot of ideas, and there's a lot of description, and it's starting to sound really complicated, and I think we need to simplify so we can take more action. Because I, I don't want to sit here for years and years while things keep getting worse, you know what I mean? <laughs> while we're just talking about it intellectually. I, I, I understand you know this. I mean? I, I, I've, attended, I've attended a ton of meetings over the years where people just talk and talk and talk. Okay. Same but here. when you talk about action, let me give you an example. Okay. If you want to take this to city council, mm -hmm. all right, you need five votes. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll get three positive and mm -hmm. two fence setters. If you walk into the council chambers with six or ten people, those fence setters aren't going to move for you. If you show up with a hundred people, those fence setters are going to vote you away. Okay, because they understand that. That's something that they can grasp. Okay. <clears throat> you know, all action's only effective if it brings change. I agree. Okay. So action for action's sake doesn't make any sense sense to me personally. No. Okay. <clears throat> you know, I am really, you know, been enthusiastic about the Occupy movement because it's for the first time normal people have an opportunity to have a voice in pure democracy. And it's something that's been lacking. Okay. Now, how do we get more people to participate in this dialogue? I think uh, one big part about um, how we can get more people to participate, I mean, we were talking about labels, you know, anarchists, socialists, and I think some people just see it as a group of just that from the outside, certain people. But, you know, just they just see us as like, you know, anarchists, socialists, like this, whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, Tea Partiers, Libertarians, a lot of people on the right would agree with certain aspects of the movement, you know. They just agree with bailouts, you know government, you know, government having certain preference towards corporations, I think that we need to try and unite as many people as we can for the 99%, you know, start bringing some people from the right to talk about how they disagree with the bailouts. You know, we need to get that message out there, more universal thing. When, when I, I 
just, uh, I went to that one demonstration in Center Way that we got up to Reed's office, and I had the 99% thing on, and I don't walk very fast, so I was way behind everybody else, and then afterwards I went in and ate and shot. And a lot of people just came up to me and said, oh, you went to that? And I said, yes. And they, we just talked and they were, I, I had a positive reaction. But I think uh, people want to know there's other people out there. They're not alone. So I think you simply have to identify yourselves with, during your daily life, if possible. I mean, I, I'm not going to lose my job. I've got my social security. Um, you know, um, I don't think people are going to confront me. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, if, if you're out there and they can see it and they speak to